You tell me when, okay? I'll do, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay, thank you. Ramesh ji, are we ready now? Take one minute, sir. Okay. Sir, sir, whenever a recording comes on the top, you can start. Gerard, you can you can unmute yourself now. Unmute. Okay. 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 So we'll begin now. Uh, a very good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome the participants uh, connected to the JK Study Circle in Door. Our speaker today is Mr. Gerard Shamishan. He is from uh, France, a place very close to Paris. And Gerard is going to uh, share his own experiences as a seeker of truth along with Jay Krishnamurti. Uh, I'll just briefly introduce Gerard because many of you would not be knowing him. Gerard had been interested in Krishnamurti's teachings right from the age of 19. He is a psychologist and counselor by profession. He used to go to Sanden, Switzerland from France every year from 1965 onwards till 1985 to hear Krishnamurti's talks. Gerard spent two years working in Brockwood Park School. Hello. Anju, this meeting is going on. I'm going to get a little bit later. I'm going to get a little bit later. Uh, so Gerard spent two years working in Brockwood Park School, UK from 1983 to 85, while Krishna was alive. And there, Gerard got acquainted with Professor P. Krishna. And that brought him to Rajhat Basin to school for three months in 2006-2007. I met Gerard for the first time in 2007, so it's a long association. He got married with Sangeeta, a teacher in Rajghat Basin School in 2011, and had been visiting Rajghat every year for four months from 2011 to 2019. He presently lives near Paris in France, and uh, uh, he's going to talk about his own journey of truth in the light of Christie's teachings. With these words, I want to welcome Gerard and also express our uh, thanks and gratitude for agreeing to give a talk before this group. So with these words, Gerard, you are welcome now and please start your talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you all. <clears throat> well, as a matter of fact, I had to, to meet Chris Amirti teachings uh, because when I was uh, 17, I met a family who actually were uh, theosophists, and um, they, they, they went to live in Pondicherry, in the Sri Robindo Ashram. I don't know if some of you know. And it is more famous because of Oroville, Oroville. So my, this friend, they introduced me to Theosophy and also Krishnamurti. Uh, and a friend of mine who was at school with me uh, brought me a few bulletins, you know, you know these bulletins from the bulletin of a star. So I, I, I could begin to read Krishnamurti uh, thanks to these bulletins when I was uh, 17, 18. <clears throat> and I got interested very quickly, very uh, completely. So uh, from, the, from 1965, I went to Sanan to listen to him. <clears throat> And I was, uh, I never stopped. I never stopped from that. In 69, I had a private, a private uh, meeting with Chris Amurti. 
And um, I decided to go to, to Blockwood. As Mr. Dubé said, I stayed two years in Blockwood, uh, which was uh, wonderful at the beginning and awful at the end. I tell you why. Actually, uh, you must have read Krishnamurti life uh, written by <clears throat> by um, uh, it is not um, Mary Zimbalist. Uh, Pupul, was it no, pu not this one. The other one, the, the English lady. Uh, Mary I, I don't Mary, Mary, Mary Lytton. Mary Lytton's Mary Lytton's biography. Yes. And she she never mentioned the, the problem that there was a big problem in Brockwood at that time because Dorothy Simon, the, the, the head of the school, had a heart attack. And so she had to be um, she had to go to the hospital for two or three months. And then Krishnamurti asked her who who can who can be the head of the school when you are when you are during the war heel? And she said uh, Scott Forbes. So he came back and he said, "Okay, Scott Forbes. Scott is going to to take over." And all the people there, the old people, the one who were in Brockwood for several years, they say, "No, no, 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 not Scott, not Scott. Me, me, me." <laughs> they all wanted to be the head. So Krishnamurti, very uh, surprisingly, he said, oh, you want to be the head? Yes, yes. Okay, you are the head. And he said that to four people. So then this school of 50 students, 50 students school had, during one year and a half, had five heads plus the husband and wife. So it was a very strange uh, situation, and a lot of a lot of conflict, a lot of difficulty, and I was in the middle of that. So that's why I say at the beginning it was uh, paradise, and at the end it was hell. <clears throat> so uh, independently from my experience in Brockwood. I wanted, of course, to, to start a school, uh, a Krishnamurti school in France. So I studied, I studied accordingly, English and psychology. And uh, uh, I, I gathered a few people with me, about 100 people, and we wanted to start a school in France, but it never, it never worked out, unfortunately. I don't know why, because maybe we were not mature enough, maybe uh, be, because of the money. I don't know, but it never worked. And uh, through friends, I, I met Professor Krishna, who was giving lectures and uh, he was coming almost every year in France to, to have meetings with uh, interested people. So I gathered, I, I, I went to, to join these meetings, seminars, and eventually he said uh, that he was uh, looking for somebody to, to work in the school in, in Rasgat. And I said to him, okay, I am interested. So he said, do come. So in 2007, I joined Rasgat, but um, uh, somehow it was not possible really to, to participate because Kabir, who was the head at the, at the moment, somehow was not going along with me. So that's also, um, so I, st I stayed three months, three months in Rasgat, not really, I was friendly with people were friendly with me, but I was not really working together. But I was uh, I was welcome in meetings. I was uh, 
uh, talking with teachers. And eventually that's how I met Sangita, who became my wife uh, three years after. So in 2011, I came back to Varanasi to, to meet Sangita. I rented a, a flat in Varanasi downtown and I was visiting the school every day. But um, people were not very happy with that. It was, it, it is not the West, it is not like in France. <laughs> so uh, eventually we, we married in December 2011. <clears throat> and I, I became, as Professor Krishna said, I became a teacher in law. <laughs> so, as a teacher in law, I was welcome to meetings and I was welcome to also to give French lessons. And it was quite, uh, quite nice for me. I discovered India more. I, I traveled around also with Sangita and I met people uh, more intimately, like uh, Mr. Dubé, Professor Krishna, and so on, and, uh, and Rupam, Rupamji also. Mr. Dubé's wife. <sighs> so, but for some reason, for some reason, Sangita had to leave the school. I don't know exactly what happened. You know, she said there was some disagreement or she was not, uh, she was, for some reason, she had to leave the school. So from 2000, 2009, 2019, I, I don't go to the school anymore. And that's also, it has been quite difficult for me. It was a, a, a big disappointment. And now because of that uh, Corona business, I cannot go also to India. Uh, which is, uh, you know, this, there is a, a question that you have to be vaccinated to travel by plane and so on. So I am stuck in France now for two years. I don't see my, my wife only on internet. So it is a very strange uh, married life. Okay, so now I would like to tell you more about my understanding of uh, Krishnamurti teachings. <clears throat> as, you, as you all know, Krishnamurti was introduced to the world as the word teacher. And this, uh, this uh, title, word teacher, uh, had a very, uh, was very important for me because Deep, deep down, I am a teacher. I like to teach. I like to convey what I know. I like to listen to people who know something. So the, the, the teaching, teaching is uh, very important for me. Uh, that's why I wanted to start a school in France also. So, If I think that the starting point of Krishnamurti missions was the Omen 1929 talk. Omen is in Holland, as you, you should know. And um, and this talk, in this talk, Krishnamurti severs himself from the theosophical. Uh, society. He, I think he, he, he starts on his own. He starts on his own. His brother died two years before in 1927, which was uh, terrible for him. But somehow he recovered and he, he started really uh, his mission from 1929 on. 
And in, the, in, this, in this talk, I don't know if you remember, he, he tells a story of the, the devil and his friend. Do you all know this uh, story? The devil and his friend. So I just, I just give you the story for those who don't know. So the devil and his friend are on the street and, uh, and they see somebody who is picking up something from the, the ground and uh, the friend of the devil says, what has he picked up? And the devil says, oh, he picked up a piece of truth. Oh, his friend says, oh, that's not good for you. And he said, oh, no, not, not at all. I'm going to help him to organize it. So that's this question of organization is uh, very, uh, very basic, very important for Krishnamurti because, because actually he makes, he makes, um, he explains the situation of the world because of this organization. When you organize, whatever you organize, you, you betray, you distort, you, you lose the perfume of uh, whatever, whatever you organize. But from the Romans, uh, from 2000 or 4000 years, we organize. Human beings, they organize everything. And, uh, and then here we are. The situation of the world is uh, worse and worse. So one, one main point, I think, is that every, chi every child is, of course, uh, inheriting the the culture of his parents. And the culture of his parents uh, is based on imagination and knowledge. So it is, it is very quickly that a child is, uh, is pushed, is almost forced to look into the future and to, to become. What do you want to become? You ask the child, oh, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a, a musician. So this becoming is uh, pushing the child to, to look into the future, of course, by imagination, because the future is just what you imagine, and to, to turn his back on the living present. And this this is going to have tremendous, tremendous consequences because the living present is no more what is important. What is important for the child is the future, which means is in imagination, is what he desires, what he, he, he wants to become. So, then slowly, slowly, and of course, in the modern times, we have television, we have films, we have uh, internet nowadays. So we are more and more in a, a, a life of images, a life of words. We have uh, libraries, we have books, we have a lot of knowledge. So more and more, we live in knowledge, we live in images, we live in uh, uh, concepts. We don't live in full contact with the living reality. And that's, that has tremendous consequences because we, 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 don't, we don't see, the, we don't make the difference between the word love and the reality of love. 
we go to the cinema, we go to picture and we, we see uh, people saying, I love you, people being friendly and so on. Actually, there are actors playing a part. They pretend to love, they pretend to be friendly, they pretend to uh, whatever they do, but it is not real. And more and more, the mind and the heart are fed with that. So we lose, we, we, we lose the contact with the reality of love, with the reality of friendship, with the reality of, uh, of life. And, and slowly, there is, there is um, uh, slowly, actually, we, we are not, we don't notice, we are not aware, but we are uh, impoverished, impoverished of this, we are lacking this uh, direct contact with, with life, with the reality, with the dimension of life. And so we, 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 are be, we become weaker and weaker without noticing. You know, it is like uh, if you eat a, a food which is, which is poor in vitamins and so on, you slowly you become ill, you know, and, and, and eventually you die. So, so Krishnamurti, when he starts speaking, actually he, he, makes, he makes clear that what is important is now. He says, listen to me. He says, uh, uh, observe. Uh, he says, uh, uh, be aware, you know, so awareness, listening and, uh, and observation is only in the present time, only in the present. And of course, at first, at first we say, we think, oh, of course, I know how to observe. Of course, I know how to listen. But we are not aware that from childhood we observe and we listen to words and to images, not to living, not to li the living reality. We are, because, as I said before, we are pushed by society, by education, we are pushed to look into the future we want to become. So this, slowly, we learn to do that. So we, we don't notice anymore that we are not in full contact with the living present and we are more interested in the future, what we are going to become than what is going on now. And Krishnamurti, as a good, as a good teacher, is uh, uh, helping me to come back to the, to the present. And of course, at the beginning, I don't, I don't understand that it is so difficult, you know, because I have experienced that many, many times in Sanan. I was listening to him and very quickly, very quickly, the mind is going astray, is going away, you know, because you heard a word and because you heard this word, you begin to think along that line. So you lose contact with the speaker and eventually you come back. So when you do that at school and the teacher sees that you are not listening to him, he says, oh, Gerard, listen to me. Don't look through, through the window. And so you come back. So you learn slowly to concentrate on what is going on. And Krishnamurti makes clear that concentration is not attention. So at the beginning, I, I must say this, this difference between concentration and attention was, was not very clear for me. What does it mean? You know, concentration and attention. 
So this all-inclusive attention that he is pointing out is natural to the little child. When you are two or three, naturally you have this uh, kind of attention. You listen to, you listen to your mother, you listen to your father, you listen to the cat, you listen to the dog barking, you listen to the bird uh, singing in the tree, naturally. But because of what I said before, because you at school, you are slowly and slowly forced to uh, to concentrate on what on what the, the teacher is saying. You are you are forced to concentrate on what you are going to become. You lose the capacity to be aware. You lose the capacity to be fully attentive. You you become concentrate you you can't concentrate but you are no more att attentive and that is uh, very damageable actually so Chris Damerti is pointing out this fact and um, and um, and so you 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 become aware slowly that this 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 has happened to you without noticing. You have not. You are not aware that you have been cut from the from the living present. And actually, it is in the living present that the reality of life occur. Love is in the living present. Friendship is in the living present. Beauty is in the living present. So. You are you 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 are not you are not you are not uh, you are not nourished by the living present. You are nourished by images, and images don't contain life. Okay, images are reflection of life but they are not life itself they are not fully life i can see you on the picture here all of you but it is only an image of you it is not the whole of you okay so that is very important to to realize because uh, without noticing it we lose contact with life and so slowly slowly we uh, we 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 lose contact with the in intelligence of life. And so the action that we are, that we have, the action, our life, life is action. So our action is, is, uh, is not complete, is not uh, deep enough, is not uh, total. So actually what, what I, uh, noticed is that first when Krishnamurti says listen to me listen to the speaker it it I noticed that it is difficult and 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 also slowly uh, I realized that it is also painful to be in the present you know is not only uh, not only uh, difficult but also painful because my mind from childhood is so is so used to imagine to go in imagination to uh, to dream and to uh, to run away from the from the living present which is also boring you know to go in the nature is boring to uh, to look at the river flowing is boring to uh, watch a tree or to look at a flower is boring you know i want to i want to have excitement by stories by uh, uh, something to do and so on so slowly i lose i lose the capacity to be uh, in direct contact with with life Uh. 
So I noticed, I don't know if you have noticed also, but I noticed that when when you try when you try to to come back to the living present in uh, what you can call some kind of meditation, um, all what you have avoided, all what you have avoided during all these years, rush back to you. So it is like um, it is like uh, uh, what what the psychologists have discovered through psychoanalysis. It is a, a reminding. You know, you you it was deep deep down in you, and it comes it comes back to the surface, and then uh, you are you are overwhelmed by by that. You know, it is it 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 it, it can be very painful to you for you. So, when you realize that you have been cut from the living present and you try to come back to the, to the living present through meditation and so on, you have to stand, you have to face, uh, you have to face a very deep, a, a very strong pain I don't know if it happened to you, but it is happening to me actually for two years now. And it is very difficult to, you realize that it is very difficult to be in the present moment, in the living present. So the living present actually is suffering. So I think in my mind, it uh, I, I, I have connected that to to the crucifixion of Christ. I think that the story of Christ, the crucifixion is that when you when you want really to come back to real life and so be able to love really, not in, in imagination but real love, then you you go through hell. And hell, in the Christian Christian dom Christian world, is uh, is uh, represented by crucifixion. You know, nothing can be more terrible than to be to be nailed on a cross. You know, so this this idea, this uh, representation of Jesus being crucified, is also what is going to happen to you when you want to come back to real life and so when you want really to love when you want to to be a full human being so to be a full human being intelligent loving sharing caring is what is what is uh, uh, what is what what we have to do? What is what Krishnamurti is pointing out? Please realize that you you have lost contact with the living present, so you are not living really. Maybe you could say that you are dreaming a life, but you are not living your life. So to come back to the living present, to come back to love, to come back to you, you are going to go through hell. And so maybe, maybe this process that, uh, that is mentioned in the biography of Krishnamurti was this process, was this cleaning of the whole mind because because this artificial life that we live is what is happening to us for, for millennia already. Not only a few years, not only me or you, it is generation after generation who are forced to live this artificial life that we call living. It is like a, it is like a, a wild animal that you take from the forest and you put in a zoo. This poor animal, I don't know if you have been in a zoo, 
to visit this uh, zoo. I have done that several times. I don't do it anymore. I don't go to zoos anymore. But you can see these wonderful animals. They are deprived from their real life. They have no more the forest. They have no more the, full, the open sky. If it is an eagle, if it is a bird, they are in a, in a cage. Even if the cage is big, it is a cage. Even if the, the tiger has a, a, big, a big cage or the elephant has a big, a big piece of ground, it is, not the, it is not the open nature. It is not the real uh, space where nature has put the, this animal, the bird or the, or the elephant and so on. So I think that we human beings, we are like these poor animals in, the, in zoos. You know, we are limited to a space, a mental space and also physical space like towns and so on, which, which is very reduced, which is very restricted to a small, to some, to, to a few functions that we have, but not the full reality of what is a human being. So Krishnamurti is asking us to, be, uh, to become aware of that tragedy and come back to, to the full reality of what is a human being with uh, and not live only through imagination, not live only through images, but the real full life. So that is mainly what I wanted to say to you. So we can discuss from that because it is an immense question. So I don't know. I, I don't see you are not all asleep. You are, have you <laughs> have you listened to? So you can ask questions now. Thank you, Gerard. Thanks a lot. I think you have you have in a in a very compact manner you have discussed the teachings, and uh, I'm sure. There are questions I can hear. See one hand being raised. Mr. Kidesh Kumar, please unmute yourself. Unmute. Yeah, please, please unmute yourself. Yes, ask your question. Merci beaucoup, Gerard. Yeah. Uh, can you listen to me? Can you? Yes, yes, I listen to you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, you said that uh, we live in the images. And yes. in the cinema, what we see is not real love. They try to act uh, that love is there, but in fact, it's a pseudo love. And do you think that uh, then cinema, watching cinema, even classical cinema films are harmful for finding self? I think I think that actually cinema uh, is very good because we, thanks to the cinema, we begin to be aware of what is going on in the mind. What is going on in the mind long, long, long before cinema was invented is a, a, a whole process of Im making images and naming, you know? I see a tree and I, I, I say, oh, it's a tree, it's an oak. I see a bird and I say, oh, that's a, a parrot. So actually this naming, this uh, building of images in, my, in the mind is going on for millennia upon millennia. It is a capacity of the mind, of the human mind to do that. But through education, the, the human mind has been forced to do that only and, 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 uh, and, and turn your, you have been forced to turn your back on the capacity of silence, the capacity of watching silently. And that's a tragedy. The tragedy is not that the tragedy for the bird 
is that he cannot fly away. He can't fly from here to there in the cage. But the tragedy that he cannot fly away from the cage. So in the same way, the tragedy for human beings is not that we have imagination. The tragedy is that we are kept in imagination. We are kept in images. We are no more capable, uh, only a few of us are capable to, to watch whatever without the name, to look silently. We have lost that capacity to lose silently like the, the bird has lost the capacity to fly away from the cage because the, the cage is built in such a way that it is not possible for the bird to, uh, to fly away. In the same way, the lion in the, uh, in the zoo cannot go back to the savanna, cannot go back to the forest because of the structure of the zoo, because of the structure of the cage. So in the same way, because of the structure of the, uh, of the education, of the, the, the training, the, the years of training, the human mind is not capable anymore of silence. Or it is, it is, a, it is a false silence. It is a forced silence, like they do in, in, uh, in uh, Zazen. When they, they practice Zazen, they force the mind to be silent. But the, the mind being forced to be silent is not a silent mind, you know? That's a very important point. <clears throat> so actually, we have, to we have to come back to, to the natural capacity to be silent, but first we have to realize that we lost that capacity you know, to be silent. We lost the capacity really to listen. We concentrate and we mixed up concentration with, uh, with uh, uh, listening. You see, so that's a very important point. So I don't know if I answered your question. I think you had, thank you Gerard. I okay. think we have uh, another question from Mr. Ganesh Patil. Please go ahead, ask your question, Mr. Patil. Oh, so uh, somebody asked uh, to, to come back to this question that present is pain. Present is painful. Okay. Um, if you take if you take the example of a drug addict, somebody who has slowly he has started drinking, alcohol one glass and then two glasses, and then now every day he needs a bottle of of alcohol. He needs a bottle. I don't know if you met such people, but I met. I, my own father was alcoholic. Uh, my sister was alcoholic. Uh, several friends of mine, and they were drinking a lot every day, every day. So, you know what happens when they don't have, when, they, when the bottle is empty? You don't know what happens when the bottle is empty? Then they go through hell. Of course, they manage so that they have always a full bottle somewhere. But if it happens that they don't have uh, any more anything to drink, then they go through a crisis. So actually, the mind is like that. The mind is so addicted to live in imagination that when you cannot fly away, when you cannot escape in imagination, you meet that pain terrible pain, which is, which can be at, at, big, at the beginning, it can be annoyance, you, you feel bored, you feel, uh, you fidget, you feel nervous. 
And if you cannot escape from that uh, nervosity, from that uh, pain, it, 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 from that uh, um, discomfort, then it becomes very painful. You begin to suffer. And that suffering is so terrible that you go to the doctor and you say, doctor, give me something. And the doctor is going to give you a pill. So, or you, you have a friend of yours which, uh, who is going to give you some, some other uh, uh, drug, okay? So you go from one drug to another drug. You go from alcohol to, uh, uh, to something else. I am sure that you have experienced that, you have friends around you and you, who have fallen into that trap and you know what I, what I'm speaking about. So this is, uh, this is our life actually. And uh, so the mind has many, many ways to escape from that suffering. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gerard. I think you have explained very well. Before we take question from Harish, Harish Ji, uh, Mr. Patil wants to know your personal experience. How did you shift from concentration to attention? I know it's a, it's a wrong question to ask how, but can you say something about it? Oh. <laughs> That's the whole point. That's the whole point, the how. So, yes, wh why, why the how is a false question? Because how will invite a way. And the, the, the person who is going to answer to the how is going to point out to you a way to reach what you want to reach, actually. So this way is actually a dis, uh, this this way whatever it is is a disconnection from the the present because the way is making you look into the future you have a you want to reach a goal into the future tomorrow or in 10 years time like this monk, I met a, a, a Buddhist monk, and he said, it took me 20 years to be able to meditate silently. It, it took me 20 years to have a silent mind. So actually, this, this man, he worked every day of his life during 20 years to achieve that. So this silent mind, he had in his imagination for 20 years and finally he could uh, he could uh, adapt himself to that so that was artificial but he didn't realize that so only only in the now is the reality in the future there is no reality in the future there is only images there is only the image of life are also in the past. In the past, you have the image of life which has been. In the future, you, you have the image of life which will be. But only now, you have life itself. So this question of attention is very important because attention is whole. Like life, life is whole. Life is what is now, what I can see, and also what I cannot see. Okay? Life is whole. But concentration is only on part of life, on something peculiar that I extract from what is, and I want to concentrate on that. So I exclude all what is not, what is not my interest. And this exclusion makes that my understanding cannot be whole. My understanding can only be whole if I take the whole in my mind. What I know 
and what I don't know. What is there visible and also what is not visible. Okay? The, the, yes, so that is very important point. Thanks, sir. Thanks. I think Harish has a question. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, good morning. Namaste. Uh, as a language teacher, and also, you know, as uh, one of the translators of uh, Krishnamurti's English books, uh, I liked uh, Gerard sir, your use of uh, the analogy of crucifixion. Uh, I also liked uh, your use of the word hell. Uh, of course, there may be other words also, like uh, I suppose uh, St. John of Arc used the word dark night of the soul. And then there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel and things like that. Uh, but of course, words are different. So, um, so basically what you are implying uh, when you use the word hell, so this journey of the discovery of truth uh, is basically our willingness to live through this hell without escaping, okay? To, to be rooted, seated, uh, in in the living now, uh, but as, as you also pointed out, and which is so true, uh, for a couple of minutes, one can watch the tree, marvel at the beauty of the mountain and anything, but, but then what? Then the uh, monkey mind wants some escape route so that one doesn't have to keep observing the mountain uh, or keep sitting in a posture or something. Uh, but suppose I don't escape. I said, no, 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 sorry, sir. Uh, there is no escape. You have to be here. Today is a Sunday. You, you, have, you don't have any work. So why don't you just sit and watch the tree, the, listen to the birds, uh, or listen to the train passing uh, by? So do you think that this kind of coercion is worth going through or no? Through coercion, also one cannot discover truth. Gerard, you understood the question? Uh, can you summarize the question, please? I, I think I, I was a little lost. Harishji, would you, would you brief, say, brief, brief, unmute yourself, unmute, unmute. Can uh, you summarize, all, summarize your question? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is, there is no denying the fact that uh, to remain unoccupied and just to be in the present is boring. Is boring, suffocating, stifling. Okay. Ah, okay. 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 I, and and I you said that question. the hell. It it is hell. Yes. Yes. I, the I kind of crucifixion. Question. But yes. you, although you did not say, but you said that this hell is worth going through. Yes. <laughs> if, if, yeah. but, but, but we all have our limitations. Uh, yes. Forcing myself not to escape and remain in that uh, state of boredom. Uh, uh, this fo forcing oneself or coercion, what Krishnamurti used the word coercion. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Will that help me? Because Hindus also say tapasya. They said, what you said, hell. They said, tapasya. So, so you have to go through this penance. Uh, if, I, if I can use the word, you have to pay the price for that gem of truth. So, but that coercion, is that okay? All right. <clears throat> you got it, Jared, now? You got it? Yes, yes, I got it. Actually, actually, what is difficult for us is to realize the real state in which we are. You know, that's a, that, that's a difficulty. The difficulty is that when you, when you are asleep, when you are dreaming, you don't, you don't know you are dreaming. It's only when you wake up that you realize that you were dreaming. But in your dream, you don't know you are dreaming. So actually, the real state of, of our mind is something that we don't notice. 
only only uh, in contact with Krishnamurti, in a talk with Krishnamurti, you begin to be aware that you are not present because you are you you realize that you are not listening. He makes you realize that you are not listening. You know he is he is totally hundred percent in the present. He is in full contact with the people around him. He is listening to the bird in the in the tree. He is listening to the plane flying over the the tent. He is uh, listening to the river flowing nearby. He, he is fully present. So he invites you to be to come to that present moment and because he invites you to be present to come to the present moment to become aware that you are not present but this non presence which is your state of mind from childhood from the age of three or four, you are no more present. You have lost that capacity through school, through, uh, through uh, desire, through uh, being encouraged by your parents to become. You have lost the capacity to be fully present. And you, of course, you don't know that. You don't know, you think you are present. You see? So I think that the, the beauty and the richness of Krishnamurti teaching, of Krishnamurti conference, of Krishnamurti talk, is that he helps you to realize that tragedy. Because it is a tragedy. Because you think you are living, you think that you, are, you have a a relationship with your wife or with your neighbor, actually you have not, you see? Like, like the, the tiger, he, he is alive, of course, he's eating the food you give to the tiger, but he's not a tiger, he is a tiger in a cage. So you are not a human being. You are a human being in the past or in the future. You are a human being in the images. You are not in a human being fully alive. And that's a tragedy of man. Is it clear now? Yeah. Thank you, Gerard. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> I think we have another question coming from Dinesh Ji. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, are you able to listen to me? Yes. Uh, my yes, question is... Can you listen to him? Mr. Gerard, are you able to listen to me? Hello? Yes, I, I listen to you. Uh, don't you feel that uh, in case of human beings, this image making is a natural process. And uh, also, the present is never free from the past as well as future. There are linkages from the past and there are projections in the future. So man is, uh, this is a natural process, unlike a drinking uh, of alcohol or any other thing. Of course, there is a cage. Uh, he's unaware that he has made, slowly, slowly he's making a cage. But otherwise, this is a natural process. Don't you think this? Yes. Of course, of course. Uh, of course, the time is flowing like a river. Yes. Uh, and so the present is connected to the past and connected to the future. That's real. But yes, yes. what you call what you call living, what you call living is only now. And so the capacity to be in the now is is very important because only if you live in the now, you are fully in contact with life. So the tragedy of man is that slowly he loses the capacity to live in the now because he is forced to live in the past or to live in the future. 
So, you so think... You mean- so you mean to say that real challenge is how he can uh, remain in the present uh, despite of the past linkages and the few future projections you mean to say that my my po- my point is that if when you lose when you lose the capacity to to be in full contact with the living present you lose also the qualities of life you lose also the qualities of life and you have only the word love you don't have love anymore you you lose the you lose the capacity to be happy you have only the word happiness and that's a tragedy so actually society through a very complex process of education of so called education has deprived you from the real capacity from the real quality of life like like the 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 owner of the zoo has taken to exploit the animal has taken the the, the animal from the forest to make money you know to have the visitors and make money so society has taken from from you the capacity to be to be fully alive to exploit you as a worker to exploit you as a policeman to exploit you as a an engineer he has he has taken from you the capacity to be fully alive to exploit more intensively your memory your capacity to reproduce to repeat so because of that human beings are in this state of mind because in the, in this in this terrible situation because we are no more we are no more capable to love we are no more capable to uh to be joyful we are no more capable to uh, to to have a full relationship to nature and so we destroy nature for money we we destroy uh we destroy relationship between uh people okay so that's a tragedy that we don't realize because we are we are used to to live in images okay is that is that is that clear yeah one has to live with the society also no but what has to live with the society also or not of course of course you you live with society but society is like the is like the cage for the tiger you know it is Uh, it, it, it is a, it is a, a terrible limitation okay okay, okay. Uh, when in my youth when i was when i was uh, when i was 20 i could i could cross I, i i remember when i went to england i uh, i walked through all paris because i was hitchhiking so i could walk from no, from south to north of paris of the paris of uh, 60 years ago 50 years ago nowadays it is impossible to walk through paris it is uh, 50 50 kilometers you know mm-hmm. so actually the the artificial life that we have created has become terrible has become immense i was also i was also in 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 um, in, in uh, bangalore in uh, in the 60s in bangalore and bangalore was not a village but it was a, a it was a, a big town but now it is immense now it is huge town so the the 
life, the artificial life that we are is so immense that now there is no space, not once, one, one minute, one second of our life, everyday life is natural, is, is uh, you know, that's a tragedy. Thank you, Gerard. I think we have a question from Anandji. Please go ahead, ask your question. Uh, sir, my question is, how do I understand uh, the past, present, and the future when it comes functionally and psychologically? How do I differentiate that? How do I understand? Uh, say again, what, what, what is the question? How do when I? I? When I say I have to live in the present. Yes. Functionally, it is essential. I need to do that. But psychologically, it causes me a problem. Can I look at that as a question, sir? Actually, I think, I think that the first, the first step is to realize that you live in the past or in the future. You don't live in the present. Only if you realize that you don't live in the present, then there is a stop. I think that was the, the job of Krishnamurti. The job of Krishnamurti in his talk is to make you, to make me realize how I live, to make me realize my lack of attention, to make me realize that my mind is going off, is going away in, uh, uh, in, in some, somewhere else, you know? Only when I realize that, then something else is possible. So it's, it's like this, my past experience tells me after dark, I should not go out into the woods because of animals. It is not safe for me. So I take care in the, uh, that, you know, I don't go out. Functionally, it is essential. My past is required for my survival. But psychologically, it, it plays a devastating role. Can we look at that as a question? How do I understand that? Yeah, that's the whole point, you know. Uh, it, is, it is quite easy to realize that uh, the past is knowledge, the past is words, the past is images. When I want to remember my youth, of course, I, I, uh, with my mind, I look at my youth when I was younger and I have images coming. I have uh, uh, the remembrance of my father telling me this and that. So that is memory. Memory is uh, uh, helpful to remember the past. And also when I want to uh, uh, imagine next year when I'm going to meet uh, Sangeeta again, my imagination is also helpful. I can, uh, I, I can use my memory and I say, oh, it's going, how, it's going to be like that. And she's going to wait for me at the gate and so on. So this is imagination. But the tragedy is that we are not capable to, to be in the living present without imagination without with a silent mind you know what is a silent mind a silent mind is when there is no word in your mind when there is no images coming in between you and what is and i don't know if you have tried to do that if we have tried to look at a tree without the word tree but it is quite it is almost impossible for most of us only a few are capable, maybe for a second or two, to look at a tree without the word tree. So when you realize that, when you realize that the word is always in between, that the word is, the image is always in between, then you begin to realize what is the problem with you. You begin to realize that you have lost contact with the living present. So the relationship is not complete. So that's why I take the, the example of the tiger in the cage. 
the tiger is a tiger, is a, a wonderful animal, but because of the cage, he is not in the forest anymore. Because of because of the cage, he is he has not the life of a, a tiger anymore. He is a tiger in a cage. Like the elephant, he is no more an elephant. He is an elephant in a zoo. So human being, the human being we are, uh, we are not fully human beings. We are human beings in images, in imagination. So Krishnamurti is pointing out that to us, the tragedy of that. So he wants to help us to come back to the full reality of a human being. A full so, uh, reality of a human full reality of a human being is when a human being is using images when it is necessary and 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 and, and is capable of silence a silent mind when it is also necessary thank you Jared. thanks a lot okay uh, we have another question coming from uh, uh, arti walia yes go ahead ma'am go ahead ask your question uh, yes, sir. Um, I have been uh, reading Krishnamurti since some years and uh, somehow there is this theoretical understanding and even what you are explaining has uh, been understood at one level, but then to apply it in day-to-day -day life and to practically apply that understanding uh, seems almost impossible. Because at one le level, you do have an intellectual grasp of it, but it doesn't seem possible to go along with it. And secondly, like he talks about that it is not a process, it's instantaneous. Because again, if it is a process, you're caught in images, like your example of the monk who took 20 years to achieve meditative state. So it's not a process, it's something which happens immediately in an instant. I really don't understand that how does this happen and how do you, I mean, what do you do? Even if you have this intellectual understanding, how do you, what really has, should, should one be doing? Okay, maybe doing nothing, but then yet what? So could you like explain that a bit? Yes, yeah. This is a very important question. Thank you for asking. Because Listening to Krishnamurti, we are already conditioned. Because as I, as I said, we are conditioned from the age of two or three. From the age, from the beginning, the child begins to speak and he is copying the parents. And the parents are pushing, uh, influencing the child to become, to grow, to learn, to memorize and so on. So actually, from the very beginning of our life, we are, we are trapped in that process. So when you listen to Krishnamurti, even for the first time, something in you realize that there is something important. Something important is being said. Because for the first time of your life, you meet somebody who is fully alive as a, as a human being, he is fully present to you. Your father is not present to you. Your mother is not present to you. They are already in their mind. They are already thinking to something else while doing the, the cooking or whatever they are doing. So for the first time of your life, you meet somebody who is fully present, who is really uh, uh, in full relationship with what is, uh, what is, what is you or whatever is going on. So, but, but uh, you hear, you listen to the words and when he, when he says, listen to me, of course, you know that, that word, listen, to listen, because your teacher, your parents have said, listen to me. 
And so you have, you have done that. And when you listen, you concentrate. Unconsciously, it is what you do. And of course, it is not what Krishnamurti is asking you. Krishnamurti is asking you to be silent. And you cannot. Okay? You cannot. Your, your, your mind is going on chattering. Your mind is going on with the words inside of, you know, you, you have your question, you repeat the question inside of your mind, so you are not silent, so you are not listening. For example, you, are, you try to listen to Krishnamurti, and then you stumble on a, on a word, meditation. And because this word is attracting, because you, you are attracted to this word, your mind begins to think about this word, you know, meditation. So you are not listening to Kushdamurti anymore. Do you see this point? So actually, actually, this is, this phenomenon is going on in you every time. Every time, your educated mind is pushing aside the capacity to be silent. Your, your educated mind is forcing your, 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 forcing your consciousness to, to be in a certain movement, in a certain... Uh, in a certain uh, uh, a kind of understanding. So it is not silent. Okay? But only if you come into contact with that phenomenon, only if you come into contact with that phenomenon, a change is possible. Not if you read it in a book. So that's why I tried with my friends in, 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 in Rasgat, to read the teachings differently, to, to, to read, to listen, to, to listen, not to read, but to listen. As if Krishnamurti was talking to you now, as I am talking to you now, you listen to me. So when you read a talk, can you listen and not read? Only if you listen, then you can realize you begin, you can realize that you are not really listening, that you are thinking about what is being said. And this thinking is inattention. So only if you realize now that you are inattentive, a change may occur. That's a very important point. <clears throat> Thank you, Gerard. Thank you. We have another question coming from Mr. Verma, and then we go to Shankara. Mr. Verma, please. Is it audible, sir? Am I audible? Yes. Audible. Uh, we are assuming, we are assuming and equating present with the hell and crucifixion. On the other side, when we say that we, everybody has to be in the present and something is missing when we are not in the present or in the now. So there is a contradiction when we are emphasizing, when we are giving a picture about present as hell and crucifixion and then we say in the same breath that we are missing something very important as present, as now. Please tell me something about it. You got it, Jara? You got it? Yes, yes. I, I think I got the question. Uh, 
I don't know if you remember when Krishnamurti says that when you when you look at the, the world as it is, you want to cry. Because actually you are present to a river of tears, river of tears. You, you see, he uses that phrase, river of tears. So, a man who is fully present is not only present to his wife or her husband or the tree or the cat, he is present to the world. Yes. This presence is including all what is visible Yes. And all what is not visible. Okay. But it is present. Yes. When you are present, you are in relationship to all what is in the universe. Not only in your room, in the universe. You are in relationship with what is. And what is is including, of course, the tragedy of man. When you love nature, as I think you love, and you see Australia forest being burned, you cry. When you love children, when you love life, and you see the children, the poor children in the street, being starv starving and so on, you cry. You see, so to be present is terrible. It's very difficult because society has forced you to concentrate on what is happiness, on what is happy, on what is joyful. From childhood, you discard all what is ugly and you only look to what is beautiful. So you, your mind has been distorted and is no more capable to see what is. And it has become only capable to see what you want to see. Okay? I remember a friend when I was in Rasgat and we went up the river, up, up the Ganga to, to town she was a uh, Italian, so she said, oh, Gerard, how marvelous, how beautiful, how beautiful. She could see only the beauty along the river. She could not see the, all the terrible things that I, I could see. I could see the, the dirt, I could see the, the dead animals, I could see the... But she, she, was not, she was not seeing that. So you see that the mind has that capacity be, being distorted has ca that capacity to concentrate. So when you concentrate, you don't, you are not attentive anymore, which means that you don't include the whole. And only if you include the whole, your action is intelligent. Only if you include the whole, your action is all inclusive, is, in, is, is taking into account the whole of the earth, the whole of mankind, the whole of animal life and so on. Okay? Yeah, I agree with you that, the, but the whole cannot be equated with the health only because everything is there. It is all inclusive. So life includes everything based on your sensitivities. So life includes everything. So hell is one part and, and the heaven is another part which you get time and again, this feeling of heaven also. So it can't be equated with the hell only. Otherwise nobody would like to be with whatever it is. 
that's that's why to come to come back to that capacity to be present is not easy because inevitably when you begin when you open your eyes to what is you see you see the tragedy okay so it's a shock that's why i i mentioned the crucifixion of christ and also the and also the process of krishnamurti because i don't know if you if you if you know about uh, Sri Robindo, but Sri Robindo and mother, they have done an attempt to clean, as they were using the word clean, to clean the cells, the very cells of the mind and the body from the past, from the past tragedy, from all what mankind has done during the millennia that we have lived on this earth, mankind has done so many terrible things. And these terrible things are there. They are on a, in ourselves. So we have to clean that away. We have to be cured. We have to, you know, it's just like a, you clean your car because you have got you have you have been on a journey and the, and the car is full of dirt and full of uh, uh, of dust and so on so you have to clean your car in the same way the 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 brain of the of of human by, of the of, of human beings is polluted deeply polluted by all what you have, all what has been done during centuries all the wars, all the tragedies. So this, this is the difficulty. The difficulty is that we all want to, to, to enjoy nirvana. We all want to enjoy the happiness of, of the liberated man, Ramakrishna or whoever, Krishna Martin, so on. But we don't want to go through hell. We don't want that, <laughs> okay? Like, like the drug addict. The drug addict, when he puts a shot in his, in his arm, he wants the happiness of the drug. He doesn't want hell, but he is going to find hell. The drug addict is going to find hell sooner or later, okay? So actually, actually, uh, Krishnamurti, if you if you really, I, I'm sure all of you you have studied Krishnamurti for a long time. He is not he is not telling you stories. He is not telling you, I promise you paradise. Like uh, Mr. Osho was doing was saying, Mr. Osho he was very successful because he promised paradise to all of the followers. And of course, we want. I want paradise. I want happiness. That's what I want. I want to be happy. But when you open the door of the human mind, you are bound to find hell because of the past, because of what is. Okay? When the Americans uh, arrived in... in, in, in in Germany, at the end of the war, they found concentration camps and all the tragedy and all the terrible things that happened during years. You know, it was, have you, I have visited a concentration camp in, in Germany. Of course, after the war, it was in the 60s. And only to go around is terrible. So think, if you if you were visiting the this camp when people were there it, it is it, you become mad you know 
I met I met an, a man who was in such a camp. That's why I visited this camp because he said, "Oh, you go to Germany? Could you go there?" Because I I have been in this camp for th three years. Okay, then I went. It was near Munich. I went to visit this camp, and I I, I was I was sick for 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 two days. So when I when I, I went back to my to Avignon, my town, I said to this man, "Oh, I visited the camp, and this and this man he cried like a baby." Twenty years after. So these tragedies. My human human beings have been through these tragedies for millennia. It is in our bone, it is in our cell, it is in our mind. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Gerard. I think we'll take the last question now. Mr. Shankar Rao, please go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gerard. Uh, you are taken uh, to a different level of mind today. Uh, we never expected uh, that we we come across many speakers like you in Zoom, many Zoom meetings, but uh, the first time I'm seeing something different. Okay, my question is, if I could able to see a tree someday, of course, as it is, if I could able to see a tree as it is, without labeling, then that day, can I see my thought as it is? That's a simple question, sir. Thank you. You got the question, Gerard? Yes, yes, I got the question. Uh, I think that it happened to me only once that I could see something as it is. And as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it was the first time I, I met Krishnamurti in Saarland, in, in Switzerland. And uh, so I was waiting for him to come and, and he got a telephone call. So I was looking through the window in Switzerland, you know, it is a mountainous uh, area and I was looking through the window um, and it was a beautiful scenery. And so Krishnamurti noticed that I was looking through the window and he opened the, he opened the window fully, completely, you know, so that there was no obstacle. So and then he went and I looked at the, the mountain and the mountain was rushing at me. It was like, uh, you know, I could, I could touch it. I could touch it. There was no distance. There was no distance between me and the, and the mountain. It was really rushing on me. And for a few seconds, for a few minutes, I, I, I look at that mountain and you know, 10 years after, I went to the same place, the, uh, near the same, the same house where he was living, just to remind me. And I looked at the mountain again, and the mountain was very distant. It was kilometers away. So you see, so this experience of, of looking at at something without distance, without the word, without the image, is something which is very rare, but it is also so striking. You know, then you realize, then you realize the tragedy. Then you realize that you are trapped in a very narrow little space, which is what you call the mind. Then you realize that the me is a prison. Then you realize that you, you need to 
go out of the prison. Then it, then you, then it is important for you. But before you don't know you are in the prison. You see? So you cannot you cannot produce that you cannot you cannot you cannot uh, imagine you cannot invent that that uh, relationship without image but one day maybe it it's going to happen to you that you listen that you see that you look and then you realize You so maybe that's what means the the word awakening. You know, awakening means that you you are no more asleep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Gerard. So, Shri, you should be close now. Yes, sir. Before that, we have to announce that Professor Krishna's lecture on next Sunday. Okay. On the topic, yes. the scientific and religious mind, so that others Next. can attend it. That is important. And second thing, if possible, you can ask Gerard to visit again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will invite Gerard again. Uh, find out, find out his convenience, and we'll organize another talk with Gerard. Hmm. So, with these words, can I? Thank Gerard on behalf of all of us for being here and taking your time to, to deliver this talk. Okay. And we'll invite you again. Thank you, Gerard. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you to you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. This is for Sankar Rao only. So we can close now? Yeah, definitely, sir. Thank you very much, Dubey, sir. Thank, no you. Words. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Please. Please close.